In this video, Tampa, Florida. Explore the best beaches, the coolest museums, experience wildlife at its best, culture, history, and so, so much more. Come with us on this trip to Tampa, Florida and plan your best trip. Let's go. All right, our first adventure is kayaking in Crystal River and swimming with manatees. Something I will never forget and would strongly recommend. This is one and a half hours away from Tampa and I think you should probably book a tour guide ahead of time because those guys know where to find wildlife. The one we booked is Get Up and Go Kayaking which is about $70 per person plus processing fees and taxes but so worth it. They have clear see-through kayaks which is absolutely a must because it's so beautiful and the water is so clean and you can see the manatee swimming underneath you, next to you. And we were even blessed enough to see a baby manatee with its mom swimming underneath us. It's an unforgettable experience. The beauty and nature is just overwhelming. Our next stop, Hillsboro River State Park. Just minutes from downtown Tampa, this diverse park offers a refuge from city life with seven miles of nature trails and wonderful wildlife viewings. After paying only $6 per car, you can enjoy the trails, bridges, beautiful nature, animals, alligators, they even have a swimming pool there. Please give your brain a break from the city and enjoy this beautiful nature. You will not regret it. And now let's go explore downtown and even more so the Tampa River Walk, which is a 2.6 mile long open space. We worked our way down to the public market where you can find food for any taste and any kind of diet. And then we rented two scooters to ride around, but unfortunately one of the scooters for whatever reason disconnected or broke, we couldn't get it to work. So we had to hop together on the other scooter and work our way back to the car. Still an awesome experience. Well, poo poo happens, but we had a ton of fun. And now to some culture and history. Ybor City. Founded in 1885, this used to be the cigar capital of the world. Nowadays, it's designated as a National Historic Landmark District. When you walk down the 7th Avenue, which is by the way recognized as one of the 10 greatest streets in America, you can enjoy fine food from Cuba and other places, shopping, rich history and culture, brick buildings, live music, street cars, and chickens freely running around all over the place because they're protected by the city. A really awesome cultural experience I would recommend. All right, now that we got all the history and culture out of the way, let's have some real fun and real action. Bush Gardens at Tampa Bay. A full day experience for the whole family. Think of this as a half amusement park and roller coaster, half wildlife animal zoo. Super fun. Now, it's a little expensive at $100 per person, but my little tip here is, Look online for coupons or groupons. They quite often have deals going on, so if you can help it, don't pay the full price. Now, my experience was that they have a lot of add-ons to the regular price. A closer parking, a safari experience, full day dining, and all kinds of crazy stuff. But in my humble experience, I noticed that you don't really get to miss out much. Just get the general admission ticket and you'll be set. Here you're gonna experience roller coasters, swings, crazy speeds, entertainment, live music, dancing, 
wild animals, animal shows, and so, so, so much more. Just go here and thank me later. After all this fun and adrenaline-filled action, let's take some time to slow down and visit some museums. First up, the Florida Aquarium in Tampa. It's a 250,000 square foot aquarium that is maybe not one of the biggest ones I have ever visited, but most definitely one of the more cute ones. Such a positive vibe there. You gotta pay between $30 to $35 admission fee depending on the date, and after about two hours of walking around and exploring what it has to offer, you most definitely gonna walk out with a smile. The next museum we're gonna visit, and I really want to add my absolute favorite museum in Tampa, is the American Victory Ship and Museum. The SS American Victory Ship has seen service in the World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War. You get to step on this piece of history and explore how the crew lived, where the captain was, the big guns, the engine room and all kinds of cool stuff it was so so interesting also you get to learn how they did what they did and everything connected to this warship super super informative and the little boy in me totally got geeked out What movie is this? Okay, the last museum we went to here in Tampa in this trip was the Museum of Science and Industry, or short, MOSI. I'm not gonna say much, but if you have kids, absolutely must do. Let the kids wear themselves out here with all kinds of climbing, playgrounds, studying, learning, entertaining, add on planetarium shows and educational movies and all kinds of cool stuff. Well, if you don't have kids, Maybe, just maybe, there's better ways to spend your time. Those are all made out of toothpicks. And it's that time of the video. The reason why you wanted to go to Florida in the first place. We're gonna compare four popular beaches and I'm gonna give you my opinion, pros and cons on each one. Let's go. Let's go to Clearwater Beach, which is famous for its white sands and clear blue water on the Gulf Coast, which is one of the warmer coasts, perfect for this February video. There's so many different activities to do here, restaurants and bars everywhere. Now, all that being said, my personal humble opinion is, if you want a relaxing beach experience, I'm gonna give you a better suggestion later in the video because this place can get a little crowded and at some points I felt like I'm rubbing elbows with other people but if you want to do people watching and have a fun loud experience this is the place beautiful the next beach I want to talk about is Lido Key Beach it's about one and a half hours away from Tampa which by the way doesn't mean it's far it just takes forever to drive in this Florida traffic it's very relaxing, calming. There's not many people, at least at the point when we went there. The beach itself is very soft sand with a few shells that you can collect. It has concession stands, gift shops, picnic tables, even swimming pools and restrooms. And the car, the parking lot, is so close to the beach that you can actually see it while tanning. So I think it's totally worth a visit if you're close enough to that location. On our way to this next beach, the whole internet kept telling us to drive over the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, which is considered the flagship bridge of Florida. While all the pictures online and even approaching the bridge looked very beautiful, sitting in the car and driving over the bridge itself was kind of underwhelming and felt like a normal highway. Just thought I'll mention that. Now this next beach is called Coquina Beach. It's free parking, free access, there's lifeguards on place, 
You can have even trees for shadows or the beach itself, it's soft sand. And some people even say you can find shark teeth there if you look closely. Now I haven't found any, but the beach is still beautiful with clean water. I kind of liked it a lot and it's a little quieter than the other beaches, at least when we visited it. The last beach we visited on this trip, and may I add my personal favorite, is Siesta Beach or Siesta Key Beach. Unlike beaches elsewhere that are made up mostly of pulverized coral, Siesta's beach sand is 99% quartz, the finest sand you will probably ever experience between your toes on the beach. Now that being said, the drawback is that you will most probably find this sand days later in your car, in your phone case and anywhere else because it's so fine it gets into anything. That being said, this beach is awesome. It's so big and so wide. Even if there's many people, you will not feel like it's crowded because it has so much room. And you also have trees if you want shadow. You have concession stands for food, huge playgrounds for kids. Overall, my favorite pick as far as beaches around Tampa. As you can see, I'm the only one swimming because the water is a little fresh in February. That being said, it's so nice and clean. I can see my toes. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your time. Hit the subscribe button so we can explore more places together. Keep traveling.